Coming up on today's episode, watch out, Apple. Roku's got new XD boxes. We're going to unbox Vizio's newest HD TV. What is Why Die Anyway? And of course, the Blu ray releases for the week of September 28, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash hdnation for your free trial membership. Thrillist.com and godaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air. If it's in HD, we like it. Yes, we do. And it's a big week for HD. Cedia is here, right? Cedia. Basically, if you're an installer, you're probably in Atlanta right now looking at shiny toys. Anything big in the press release you show up this week? Some new projectors, actually. <gasps> uh, High-end front projectors. Our projector designs, folks. They the actually, ones that are worth more than my car. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I saw a new projector that had a specific chip in it as mm -hmm. far as the projection chip that they're using. They can use like a DLP or an LCOS chip. The chip was actually formatted for 235 to 1240 to 1 content really? natively. So you're not wasting a bunch of pixels if you're going to be no projecting. No black stripes. It's like, you know, you take a 1080p chip and you project mm -hmm. widescreen content, you can actually end up sacrificing part of the chips on the, on the projection chip sure. itself by uh, just having content that's not directly formatted for it. Having that chip makes it pretty cool. Kaleidoscape, our favorite people oh. who have figured out how to get around the DMCA ban by making you spend a lot of money. This is true. Yeah. This is true. You can't they, archive your own material unless you buy a $10,000 Kaleidoscape box. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. torturing you guys. Actually, they have a new product they've announced uh, called the Modular Disk Vault. It turns out that to legally do a Blu-ray streaming server on mm -hmm. a hard drive, the disk still has to be present in the system somewhere. Which is an incredible... What a, it is a big WTF. Yeah. So, okay, and <laughs> at this point, they, you can only have one disk in the server at a time. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, this makes it practically useless. So Wait, they're going to bring back a big, giant 400-disc carousel. 100-disc. Yeah. And so the but MDV, or the, media, uh, <laughs> the disk vault, uh, you can basically import, which means you can just shove your 100 mm -hmm. disks in there. They get basically locked into this container so that they're not going anywhere. The, the system will know what disks are in there. It can then, you know, if you haven't already, archive them to your Kaleidoscape vault. Right. Uh, keep it all stashed away. But then from that point forward, you never have to go get the disk again. The system knows the disk is there, and it kind of gets around that whole weirdness of having to have the disk in the system. Can I stream to different locations at the same time? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. just check it. Oh, in 1080p at, at the same time. Yes, yes, okay. you can. Of course, of course you can. <laughs> Before uh, they said they weren't going to do that. Uh, compared to the rest of the products you'll see on the Cloud Escape site, for 1,500 bucks for the Media Vault, that's not outrageous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to compared to the $10,000 Media Vault, the $1,500. You uh, can't. They I'm also have a, they also introduced a new kids remote for forty bucks. You can finally you've got your my first kaleidoscape. Yes, instead of instead of handing the kids you know the keys to the ten twenty thousand dollar thousand setup, dollar remote, you can now hand 10, them a forty dollar remote that you don't care if they throw it away. Uh, it's in conjunction with a software update that'll be rolling out, I believe, in October, mm -hmm. maybe in about a month from now. The main thing about the kids interface is that it, it is truly kid centric. Uh, there's not a lot. Of, there's actually no text on the screen. It's just jewel cases, and whatever the last movie they watch will be the one front and center. So they can just hit literally one button. If they hit a button, they got like two or three buttons on the remote. So it's a nice little stylish control for that. But it's also for uh, they can shuffle it up too for just their content. You have full parental controls and things like that. So, so. it'll be even easier for my son to watch. Meet the Robinsons twelve times in a row. Exactly, but yeah. you're not handing them, say, a two, three, four hundred dollar remote, let alone like a nice touchscreen interface. <laughs> Perhaps you're using your iPad to drive everything. That that I thought was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And they also provided some interesting statistics for Kaleidoscape systems, listing the top ten movies that are played from all of their users. <laughs> and for me, it was just surprising of how many kids' titles that so were on this list. Now I know list. why they have the forty dollar kids remote. There you go, because a lot of the t in their top ten list included titles like Cars, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles. Uh, a lot of movies like Planet Earth, Monsters Incorporated. So you can spend like $30,000 building a Kaleidoscape system so you can watch eight kids' movies and Gladiator. That's their top ten. <laughs> <laughs> the top ten of the users out there. So you know what? You have good options now oh as far goodness. as controlling that stuff. Sherwood America back again introducing two new audio video receivers, the RD705i and the RD705s. The i features integrated 802.11n for streaming internet audio or from local wireless devices, because having 
streaming players in your television, your Blu-ray player, your set-top box, your notebook, and your iPad, and your iPhone, and your Android device isn't enough. Now we've got it in the AV receiver. Actually, they joined Pioneer and several others. True. They have an optional Bluetooth adapter available. And it is UPnP and Windows 7 Play 2 compatible, which makes it really easy to set up with your server. 3 HDMI 1.4 outputs, excuse me, inputs, which means it's 3D Blu-ray compatible for yeah. the fourth Blu-ray you can buy in 3D. Uh, single HDMI output, so no splitting to your receiver if you have 3D Blu-ray problems. And yeah, your basic 100 watt RMS, 8 ohm at 7 channels with less than 2%. 0.2% total 0 .2. harmonic distortion. Pretty good. That's a big difference between 0.2 and 2%. <laughs> Pretty darn One's big. audible, one's <laughs> not. $500 available November 2010, and yes, it has automated room calibration. And something I should point out, I've gotten a whole bunch of questions like, why did you choose the Denon instead of a cheaper like Sony or Onkyo? Because the Denon has the automated calibration for the room, which is really sweet. We live in Odyssey's a bizarrely calibration. Yeah. And Odyssey's actually doing an iPhone uh, or like an iPod iPhone dock. Nice. It's like a $600 dock that looks like a giant <laughs> Cylon head, which seems to be the design theme this year. The uh, RD7505, by the way, same as the 705i, minus networking features for a mere 400 bucks MSRP, which means street will be down around the floor level. Nice. Yeah. Gotta love that. And while he's waiting for the boxy box and Apple TVs, he's ordered on Amazon, <laughs> Patrick scored one of the new Roku boxes that will be up for sale in about the, well, about the same time you read this. So about the same time I'm reading this, I should say. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> there will be three new Roku boxes on their way, and we've got the top of the line Roku XDS. XD Pipe S. XD Pipe S for evaluation. So. Uh, what do you think, man? Well, the new Roku boxes have a smaller case design, a new remote, Wi-Fi, a fabulous, I don't know if you can see this, purple tag logo. I, Brett, our camera operator, is mocking this as we speak. You can't hear it, but he's giggling because it looks like a pig. It's on the remote, too. Yeah. It's, it's on the remote. It's on the box. It's branding people. Don't ask me why. You're not... You don't pull that to like start the battery or well, something, right? Well, you can right? pull that to Ooh. actually remove the battery cap. It but serves a function, guys. <laughs> it's, it does serve a function. Best of all for uh, the HD Nation, the Roku XD and XD Pipe S offer 1080p. Hear that, Steve? 1080p on an inexpensive <laughs> device. You could have done it, but you didn't, did you, jerk? What Anyhow, rate? Yeah, don't even get, actually, it looks good. All right. um, actually, well, we can play 1080p video over right now. Vimeo offers it and the USB media browser. Um, which is a private channel you load into. It'll be public by the time these are on sale. And I'm going to fire up some 1080p video here. So it's a hundred dollar box, 99.99. Hey, we have a handshake here. Oh no, wait, it's coming back. Never it's mind. coming back. We had a minor HDCP issue. <laughs> What's the last time we updated this TV? Never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the XDS actually has optical and component output, dual band 802.11n, and that USB port, which allows you to play external content. Not as convenient as a UPnP server. But the quality, if the Potter video ever rolls through, take a look, dude. It's, I am. Are, are you? My are, eyeballs are happy. Oh, there we go. A little compression. It's not yeah. Blu-ray, but it ain't bad. That's also from the trailer, though, not from the actual box itself. The 75-odd channels in the Roku channel store carry on, which includes Revision 3, Netflix, Major League Baseball, Amazon Video Demand, and uh, 72 more. Nice. Note to Roku, please, please get Vudu running on your tiny 1080p-capable box because Vudu has awesome streaming video over the Internet and 5.1 surround sound. Thank you. Um, the XD and the XGS <laughs> remotes. Well, it's pretty strange, right? They have two buttons. The $60 box doesn't. Instant replay, which is a little circle going backwards, which does skips back several seconds without rebuffering the screen. Nice. And the star button for pulling up information on the channel on the screen. You hover over a channel on the home screen, you press the info button, and you get info. And, well, stuff. <laughs> the whole SDK actually is changing for the Roku box, allowing them to do new widgets, which will hopefully bring in new partners and upgrade the existing ones like Revision 3, and someday we'll even be in 1080p, but let's not talk about that right hey, now. I, I think it's a sign of maturity for a company when they have yeah. that standalone SDK ready for developers to go, and then... Well, they've had one. Now it's gotten even make better. Make software for my platform, please. Yeah, well, our I developers in-house are actually foaming at the mouth with joy at this one. If you want to load VIDI by the USB port, you need MP4 video formats only. No MKV, no XVID, and Roku tells us dot move when this private channel goes public in the channel store in October. Interesting. Uh, what's the deal with the other two boxes then? Well, the other two boxes, right, uh, Netflix streaming on all the boxes, pretty much all their partner stuff. The X HD is 60 bucks, does 720p only. The XD is 1080p and adds 802.11n. All three of the boxes are wireless now. 
It's pretty good though. The quality of the video is awesome. There's some really good Vimeo stuff on there. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, The Thrillist. You know how you always have that one friend that hooks you up with the cool new bands before anybody else has even heard of them? Thrillist is like that, but for cool new stuff to do in your city. Thrillist is a free daily email. Sift through the crap to find the best new bars, restaurants, events, services, whatever it is, they promise it won't suck. You want to know about a restaurant with oh, cheeseburger spring rolls or an undergrad tequila library or a Star Wars burlesque show? Oh yeah. Plus Thrillist even got a national version that'll hook you up with scoops on hot new gadgets, gear, and funny sites across the web. And did we mention that all this info is free? Hit up Thrillist.com slash HDNation and you'll start getting Thrillist sweet, sweet knowledge right away. Just like Serafina, me, and Roger. Lex in Las Vegas writes in, would like to hear your thoughts on Intel wireless display technology. If I understand correctly, it makes my big screen at home an extension of my laptop display without a physical HDMI connection from my laptop. Is this the real deal? Is it true HD? Will it also carry sound? How reliable is it? Thanks, signed Lex in Las Vegas. Well, is this the witty W-I-D-I? <laughs> Wide-I? Wide-I. Wide-I. It's got some limitations for HD fans, Lex, but Wide-I definitely works. Wireless display technology from Intel. It's a pretty wild concept. Essentially, it's software that borrows some of the bandwidth from the Wi-Fi adapter in a core notebook, i3, i5, with uh, basically core notebooks with Intel graphics. You just open up the Intel My Wi-Fi utility, you click, and you look, we already have it set up. It's painless. You sync it with a device like Netgear's Push 2 TV PTV 1000, which is pretty much the only receiver out there, and you're good to go. The limitations, well, they're primarily with the uh, resolution that's available on there, and let me play this so you can see it. Um, bandwidth and copy protection. Wide Eye is 720p for now, and if my memory's correct, caps at around 9 megabits per second. It's doable, pretty, it's actually pretty good for 720p. Just don't sit too close to the HDTV. You'll see some small compression artifacts. It won't do copy protected content, though. So, no copy protected Blu ray, DVD, or iTunes video will go over the network created between the graphics on your Intel powered notebook and the remote receiver. It doesn't do HDCP either. And while it's not a problem for video, the lag between the notebook and the monitor means gaming ain't going to work so well. Uh, it's out on Sony, Toshiba, Dell, a lot of other brands of notebooks. It works. It's totally. 720p. It's not going to work for your copy protected content. Cool. I, I see this as like a great secondary display option that's just super easy to set up. Maybe yeah. you want to keep some widgets over there, a, a, a fairly static browser window, maybe some light video. I, I think I think this trailer works pretty well. It's you know, it's a little, a little funky, but well, it's also you know, a little I'm not too familiar as as with. It's a loaner notebook, so. Oh, that's true too. I'm not too familiar with that, but it's performance may vary. Performance may vary, but it's workable. But yeah, like you mentioned too, it looks like about a 720p image for the desktop being on this 1080p display at least. So it could be a fun way to do remote displays. But yeah, basically, the, it uses bandwidth on the 802.11n adapter inside the notebook. You have a receiver that's also 802.11n for all intents and purposes, um, and the Netgear box is the only one out there. Totally. Blu-ray releases for the week? Yeah, let's hit it, man. It's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of September 28th, 2010. First up this week, Iron Man 2. This is the sequel to the fantastic 2008 blockbuster. This 2010 film is more of the same, and I do mean that in a good way. It stars Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, Samuel L. Jackson, and more. This flick continues the saga of Tony Stark, this time battling the ferocious Whiplash, played by Mickey Rourke. This three-disc release also includes a DVD and a digital copy, and it's loaded with extras. Deleted and extended scenes, of course, as well as commentary by director John Favreau, as well as the illustrated origins of characters like Nick Fury, Black Widow, and War Machine. You'll get an hour-long behind-the-scenes making-of documentary as well as The Shield Data Vault, which you can interact with certain scenes in the movie, uncovering inside information. Plus, rumor has it you might find a Thor teaser and a Captain America teaser as Easter eggs somewhere. And if you want a fancy metal case, head over to Target for their exclusive packaging. Next up, Babies. It's a documentary, and with no dialogue, it still manages to tell a compelling story. Four stories, actually. It follows four newborns for the first year of their life. One each in San Francisco, Namibia, Mongolia, and Tokyo. You'll see both similarities and differences between each parenting style, and some will surprise you. It'll make you laugh, it'll make you think, 
and it'll make you go aww. And if that wasn't enough, this Blu-ray release includes a quote, three years later featurette where the director revisits the babies who are now four years old. And for something completely different, Suck! It's vampire musical comedy starring Malcolm McDowell, Iggy Pop, Alice Cooper, Dave Foley, Henry Rollins, and more. It follows a struggling rock band who suddenly finds stardom when their bassist becomes a vampire. Yeah, that helps. It premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival and was part of South by Southwest this year. A bit cheesy, sure, but it does look like fun and is worth a rental when you're having a bunch of friends over. Also released this week, Get Him to the Greek! This Judd Apatow-produced comedy follows Russell Brand, who brings his character from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Aldous Snow, an out-of-control rock star. Jonah Hill plays the record company intern who has to make sure he makes it from London to LA in time for his concert. This release features a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 mix and includes both the theatrical and the unrated versions of the film. Extras include deleted and extended scenes, a gag reel, an alternate introduction, an alternate ending, Audition footage, three different documentary featurettes, five music videos featuring all the snow, and of course, a digital copy as well. You can even sing karaoke along to 15 songs from the film. And when you purchase this disc, you'll get the choice to stream a bonus movie up until March 2011. You can choose between Dazed and Confused, Uncle Buck, or Life. Other releases this week include the History Channel's Battle 360, the complete series, Coco Chanel and Igor Stravinsky, Frozen, Good, 2010's The Killer Inside Me, 1933's King Kong, The History Channel's Nostradamus 2012, The History Channel's Patton 360, The Complete Season 1, The Criterion Collection's Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, Prey, The Private Eyes, Rock and Rule, Rush, 2112 and Moving Pictures, Classic Albums, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse, and the Criterion Collection's The Thin Red Line. Time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 15 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, my Netflix queue informed me that the 2010 sci-fi flick, Book of Eli, is on its way to my mailbox. Roger Ebert gave it a thumbs up, the Hughes brothers directed it, and I will enjoy it in glorious Blu-ray quality. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees and shipping is free. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding number of devices streaming TV episodes and movies from Netflix are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3 game console, and the Nintendo's Wii console. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash HDNation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Our parade of new HDTVs rolls on. Whose turn is it this week, Mr. Herod? Yeah, Wait. last week we unboxed that wonderful Sharp Quatron, and this week we've got Vizio in the house. So anybody who's actually had their eyes open. This baby is this the, uh, let me just get the name out there, XVT 47 3SV. So this is the 47 inch version of the new XVT series for 2010. And I gotta say, I'm pretty excited about this set. Let's just get this sucker open. Why are you so excited about this set? Okay, one, it's a 47 inch screen, 1400 bucks online. Whoa. 1080p resolution. Ooh, but the technology. Yeah, we just flip that upside down. This is a high-tech TV, I have to admit. We've and once again, we've turned it around backwards. Yes. Hey, look at that, the base is installed. How nice. Let's go on this way. Look at this, no. So are you talking about the actual technology in the screen or the fact that they've integrated about 42,000 different ways <laughs> to get content over the internet? That too, both, I will say. Uh, one, it's a LED direct lit model, meaning it's not edge lit like some of the new thin sets are. This one's actually only about three inches thick, so. But direct lit LED, meaning you've got a grid of LEDs behind this screen producing the light that in turn goes through the color filter and creates the picture you see on the front. 
So you've got full performance LED. Direct LED instead yeah. of edge lighting being associated normally with much more expensive flat panels. True. Uh, that and the, the benefit though of direct lit is that you can do something called local dimming. Uh, essentially what that means is that when you've got a dark portion of the picture, you dim the LED behind that portion of the picture to make it extra dark. Mm -hmm. So black looks really dark. Uh, this screen in particular, the 47 inch version features 160 zones which looking at the specs real quick for all of the models in this series mm -hmm. is the most. So I have to say, if you're gonna cheat it toward one particular model in this series, that's gonna do really, really well. I have to say having extra zones means that you get finer detail in terms of that backlight performance. It will, uh, it will actually produce less glare, hopefully. That's the main advantage of having more zones per, per dimming, per dimming block, I guess you could say. So saying about that local dimming thing, the more zones that you can basically consider the grid of LEDs that are behind the screen, they don't dim uh, them one at a time, they dim them in blocks. And the more blocks you have, the better quality of dimming that you'll get in terms of uh, creating like glare around an object, say that's being backlit. Uh -huh. So the more zones you have, generally the less glare and less artifacts that are related to that. We need more zones, Captain. No, yeah, and the other cool thing, uh, this TV is about as internet ready as any TV I've ever looked at. Uh, 802.11n, Wi-Fi built in, Bluetooth built in. What you're holding right there, a Bluetooth slider remote. Mm -hmm. It is infrared too, so you can use that normally like you would, but why when you have Bluetooth built into the remote and built into the TV, go wireless. Hey, hold up the remote control at the front towards the camera for a second. Yes. That's the actual VIA button, that blue and white one down there. Yes. And that lets you browse the VIA dock which basically is their on-screen display. So basically you press yellow to move or delete an app in the VIA dock, blue to switch between different video screen sizes, red to exit an app, and green to view settings for the active app. So it's cool, they actually took these standard yellow, blue, red, and green buttons and applied them to their app interface. Excellent. So $1,400, 47 inches, full LED display, sophisticated remote control. Nice. Massive amounts of built-in applications. Totally, and upgradable. I think it's, I, I can't wait to get it tested to see what the color is coming off of the right. screen. Uh, the LED lighting should offer some color performance advantages in terms of consistency, mainly, over your standard fluorescent backlit screens. Can the bargain brand Vizio beat Samsung and Sony in the ultimate home theater LED flat panel challenge? Heck yeah, this is a 240 <laughs> scenes per second TV. That's right. really, what the, technically it'd be 120 hertz plus a scanning backlight system. Is it 3D also? No, not 3D yet. Okay. There, the 3D from Vizio is coming. Coming. Coming soon. Coming soon. But this looks like a solid. For 47 inches for a technically advanced TV, first impressions are pretty good. Yeah. Be, I, don't, I think you'd be hard pressed to find another set right off the top that would deliver similar price, performance, style, feature stuff. But I really want to test it out for picture wise. Let's see if, in fact, it can be calibrated pretty well. Mm -hmm. Does its film mode hold up with the content we throw at it? And subjectively, how does this sucker look with real video on it? Those will be all the things we'll hopefully get to here in the next week or so. Stay tuned, Mr. Heron has a brand new pile of hardware for testing HDTVs. Yeah. He's getting his hands on, so he's gonna test out the Vizio, the Sharp we showed off last week, and quite a few more. Right now, though, we gotta take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com, people. It's where I buy my domains, and they got web hosting, too. Yeah, web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support and free access to the hosting connection. That is the place to install over 30 free applications that are sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and your website. Now, remember, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry apps. They support all the phone platforms to order right from your phone, manage your current domains, and quite a bit more. You want a discount? I know you do. Try out the code HDN8. You'll get 10% off any order. And be sure to check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. Please, people, support HC Nation by supporting our sponsors like GoDaddy.com. Hey, we got some excellent follow-ups from viewers about projector lamps. Like this email from Brian, he writes in, <laughs> I just watched episode 57 where you guys talk about 6500K for color movies and 5400K, those are white points, for black and white movies. Just one minor point of clarification. You mentioned that the old projectors used tungsten lamps that had a warmer yellow or white. They actually passed current across the gap between two copper-clad carbon rods in open air. The arc between the rods created the light for the projectors, hence the name carbon arc lamps. I happen to have an old carbon arc lamp projector in the lobby of my home theater from my grandfather's old movie theater chain. Signed, Brian. 
That's pretty darn cool. Thank you, Brian, for that information. I totally forgot that they were using actual arc-based light for creating imagery back then. Old school. That was the, the old school light source, man. When they're whittling your <laughs> electrodes out Let's of just pass solid high current carbon. through a couple pieces of material and just let it spark. There's an experiment there that could cause great trauma and pain should it go terribly wrong, but we should, no, it's not actually. Andrew had a follow-up <laughs> question about 3D HDTV calibration before we start experimenting with high voltage and carbon. He writes in, I recently bought a Sony KDL 55 inch HX800 LED 3D TV. That's nice. And I've already calibrated it for 2D content by following the DIY tips from your previous episodes. My remaining task is to calibrate the TV for 3D content, but I have no idea how to do it, especially since the 3D glasses add a tint to the video output. Please help. Regards, Andrew in Canada. Basically, you put the glasses on and calibrate. There you uh, go. Basically, either put the glasses on or, or, or put the glasses in front of the calibration meter. Because, yes, the calibration is vastly different because the screen's going to need to be brighter to make up for the darkness or the tint or the whatever you want to call of yeah. the glasses. And, and it's specific to the glasses for your TV. I mean, right. those glasses are specifically <laughs> tinted to work with your particular 3D TV. Right. So, yeah, just put the glasses on and do exactly what you did for the 2D setup, and you should be good to go. Just do it all over again. Or if you're using some kind of colorimeter <laughs> or some kind of light measuring device, you'd have to get that lens in front of it, in between it and the TV, in order to make it a measurement for its 3D mode. Is the TV going to give you a set of settings for 2D and a set of settings for 3D, or...? Is it based it on should. the input channel? It, like the Panasonic we looked at had right. two separate sets of settings for picture control. Oh, good. One in its 2D mode and then one in its 3D mode. Like in the case of that particular TV, they actually had a THX mode mm -hmm. for 2D, but they didn't have one for 3D because at the time, although that's changed recently, <laughs> there wasn't a uh, 3D THX mode yet. So yes, just, just calibrate it like you were with the 2D mode, but just have the glasses on while you do it and you'll be good to go. Cool. And we were talking about Bluetooth remotes last week and we got a slew of responses. Peter in Rolla, Missouri? Rolla. Rolla? Rolla, Missouri. Rolla, Missouri. I'm going to say Missouri Good town. I said Missouri. I was getting grief for calling it Missouri, too. but Missouri. 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 I'll say Missouri. He says Missouri. All we'll right. settle it out. Peter writes, <laughs> if you have an iPhone or a new iTouch that has Bluetooth, the Pioneer VSX 1020K allows you to control your system with that. Cool. With this, you can also plug in an IR device into this receiver, so I would assume that you could use the iPhone iTouch to control whatever device you have plugged into it. Hmm. Probably. I own this receiver, however, I do not have an iPhone nor iTouch with Bluetooth, so I have not tried this feature. The dongle for Bluetooth is between 50 and 80 bucks, depending on where you get it. I know this probably isn't what he was looking for, but maybe you could use additional Bluetooth remotes. Uh, it's worth a mention, though. Yeah, so absolutely. I'd Peter. In Rolla. In Rolla. Peter from Rolla. Peter, who's an engineering student in Rolla. Ooh. Bill says, hey guys, I enjoy watching HD Nation in beautiful HD on my 47-inch Vizio via the TiVo Premier XL, which has a Bluetooth remote. I know the viewer wanted a Bluetooth remote control for an AV receiver, but thought you might want to know about the TiVo device. You simply plug an adapter into the USB port on the TiVo. It has a short wire, so you can position it for reception. No line of sight needed. This is a great fix for me. Please keep up the good work. Bill in Athens, Georgia. We will Ooh, do our best, I dig Bill. that. I believe we have one of those very remotes coming in here shortly. You have to send in the loan agreement. I did. Good. It's sent off. It's coming. <laughs> we'll show that off to you guys soon. Uh, another email, Kirk. He writes in and says, hey, guys, watch the latest show where you were talking about those mythical universal remotes that have Bluetooth. Unlike unicorns, they do exist. Double rainbows. <laughs> it's called the PS3 Blue Link Universal Remote Control. Really? I got one of these about six weeks ago when I was upgrading hmm. my home theater, which included the addition of a PS3 to his setup. Uh, like JR, who wrote in asking about the Bluetooth receivers this week, I didn't want to have yet another remote in the PS3 or for the PS3 in addition to the receiver's remote. Even better, it's only 40 bucks on Amazon. That's a nice price point. Its functionality is basic for a universal remote, but it really is great at what it does. The buttons are a little small, but I got used to it in about a week. The majority of the key mappings worked with my TiVo right out of the box once I found the right code. Aside from the usual tons of codes for devices, it learns IR commands as well, and it's really easy, really, really easy to program. I can't recommend this remote enough. I use it for controlling my TV, TiVo, Onkyo receiver, and PlayStation 3. Nice. Love the show. I'm looking at maybe buying Patrick's Denon receiver based on his recommendations soon. And love Robert's recent segments about TV calibration. Aw, thank you. Keep up the great work, and please help get the word out about this great Blue Link remote. Signed, Kirk from San Carlos, California. 
Thanks for the awesome. heads up. And thanks to everybody who wrote in on this one. These are kind of these, these were kind of the primary examples. We had some multiples in this category. Oh, cool. Hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. Send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. And you can always find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash techhd. That's with a K, people. We got links pretty much about everything we talked about on the show in the show notes at hdnation.tv. Hey, plus you'll find all the links to subscribe to the show. So subscribe and watch. And until next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week. What does that mean?